Um, again, I have my Strathmore 18 by 24 inch strong paper pad. I do have my 24 inch aluminum ruler, okay, which I'm gonna be using for the grid, okay? I have my blue painter's tape. I have my white eraser, which looks kind of like a little bit beat up and cut in half because I've been using it from the last demo. I do have some paper towels. Paper towels are my best friend during this process. Why? Is because when we're working and you'll start to see this is gonna be a very messy process. We're gonna encounter a lot of problems together. So if you wanna follow along, uh, by all means do so. The paper towel is a wonderful resource tool to use. So if I covered a surface of my paper with the paper towel and I went over it with my hand, I, I won't smear the drawing that was underneath, okay? That's something to consider. The paper towel is sort of a guard that protects all of your natural oils from your hands, as well as the friction from your hands, not smearing on your actual surface of the drawing because the vine is really, really soft. Let me get my name back in here. The vine is extremely soft, so it will spread and will use a lot of uh, iterations in this process to make those sort of uh, attempts to kind of, again, understand this material first. Um, I do have my materials and I do have a lot of them. Let me, let me just separate them. Give me one second. So I have white compressed, my vine, and then my black compressed. Okay. So here are my three. So I'm going to zoom in slightly so we can start to see a better angle. Okay. I have my white compressed, okay, which is more of a sort of square surface on all four sides. Okay. This is the white. Here's my black compressed, which is the same square on all four sides. They're both the same weight as each other, but then my vine willow charcoal. Okay, is a lot lighter and it's much more rounded. It's like an actual pencil. It's extremely light. You can barely even feel it in your hand and the weight of your hand. So that's something to think about. You always want to start off with your vine first. You move to your darks, which are your compressed, and then for your highlights, we'll go to your whites. Okay, did that make sense? Okay. Again, guys, so I can't see or hear anybody. So if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me and say, Ayad, can you go back? Can you do that again? I, I didn't see it on the camera or so on and so forth. Okay. So I'm going to put this on the side on my left. There's a few things I'm going to do before I start. I'm going to first start off with my four preliminary drawings. I have my phone here. I'm going to set a timer for 30 seconds. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, two minutes. I'm going to start it, um, set it for two minutes. Okay. That'll be on my right hand side. Uh, and one thing I'm actually, I'm actually missing and I cannot find it is my needed eraser. So those of you who have your needed eraser, let me know. And then, um, please put it on your camera so everybody can see what it looks like, just so they can get an idea what it looks like. Uh, if you haven't purchased it already, but your kneaded eraser is a sort of squared sort of um, uh, eraser. And it's gray and you can start to mold it and model it and you can use it as an eraser. But some odd reason, I, for the life of me, I was trying to find it all day. I cannot find it, but it might be still uh, lingering around. So if I do find it, I will let you guys know. Uh, and then somebody has their camera posted. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much. You can look at uh, Daniel's camera, they do have their gray blick um, needed eraser posted. So if you guys were wondering what that looks like, make sure to look at Daniel's camera. Thank you for that, Daniel. Um, so before, again, before I start, I'm going to take my blue paint tape. And what I'm going to do, and again, if you want to follow along on this process, by all means, I'm just going to tape my bo a border around a one and a half inch, maybe no more than two inches on my edges of my paper. So I'm gonna go first on the sides, on the top. Let me do this 
side and I'm just eyeballing it. I don't have to calculate each angle, okay? That's not important at all, okay? Uh, during the ink wash assignment, it will be, which we'll talk a little bit more about that next week. Oh, excuse me, about a month from now, I should say. Okay. Again, I'm just roughly, just make sure this is somewhat even, putting a piece there. And you can kind of see my camera is gonna do that. It, it starts to focus um, the angle, but once I move it, hopefully it'll stay fixed. So if it does get blurry, say, hey, hey uh, you know, the camera is not working or it's not clear, I'll try to adjust it again, just in case, okay? So what I've done is made a sort of just a basic square, excuse me, rectangle, um, taping on my edges out. I'm also gonna tape another vertical line in the center. Just eyeballing this because I want us to then just divide it into two. Okay. And then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna say, oh, it's about, what about, about there. I'm, also, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap in the center because the elongation is going to be, this is going to be my correct size. So length times width. So that would be 18 by 24, ideally, on my big shot, uh, sheet of paper. But then I'm going to add another one here to be right about, what about there? And I'm going to take my vine. So I'm gonna, I'll mark it. I'll say two to three, three to four, five to seven, and then eight to 10, okay? That's that one there. That's this one here. That's this one here. And that's this one there. I'm just pointing the arrows up and down, okay? Any questions about this process so far of what I'm doing? Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on camera uh, section number one. So this is gonna be two to three minutes. I'll mark it as two minutes because I'll go fast. Okay, again, with these early iterations, okay, I have my timer. Hold on, let me get my, I have my timer right here. I'm gonna put it on the side so I can get, a, get away from the camera. And before I start, let me pull up my reference. So I can have a copy of that. Where did I put it? Oops, hold on. Okay. Now I'm gonna use, again, this is the reference I'll be using for the preliminary drawing, okay? So if you need to download, or if, you want, if you're following along and you wanna use the same one, just make sure to go to the modules tab, click on Stell Life Photo Reference, and it should be available. Okay. Now let me just mirror that on my side. Just gonna lower this slightly. It's right about there. Okay. So when I, again, when I'm starting, I'm uh, looking at my format first. I want to make sure of my composition, making sure my image is correct to exactly what I want it to look like. I don't want it to be off center. I don't want it to look taller or shorter than what it actually is, so on and so forth. So I need to keep that in mind okay now remember when you're doing this take your time so when the two minutes starts what i'm going to do i'm going to use my vine okay and again this is going to be a messy process so what i can do i'm going to just keep my paper towel here on the bottom so if i rest my hand on the bottom here it doesn't obstruct any of my drawings i can move that uh, from right to left and then top to bottom okay so i'm going to set my timer one more time and then I'm going to do a quick sketch with my vine charcoal only, not my compressed, okay? And time yourselves for two minutes, okay? And this time will start now. 
Again, I'm just look, I'm gonna look at my composition and I'm gonna just loosely start adding these objects. I'm just working really loosely. I'm not worrying about any detail at all. Okay, I'm at, I'm at 30 seconds so far. Okay, I'm just really looking uh, at my drawing loosely. I'm not worrying about any details, any refinement. I don't have to look at any of that. I just wanna get my composition in there. I just wanna map it out. I have my uh, shallots here on the bottom, my onions. Okay, I have that white quartz crystal here. I can use my fingers to blend it in, okay. Okay. Again, I'm not worrying about any of the details. All I'm trying to do is to sort of look at my composition and get an idea of where things are. So I can just wrap my head around. I could use the side to make value. So to blend in some of those areas. And I have about Eight seconds left. Okay, time. So that was about two minutes. Okay, let me move the phone. So this is your first attempt. All you did in this process is timed it to two minutes. Okay. You used your vine charcoal and created a thumbnail, which is the first iterations of this four part series that we're gonna be doing, okay? What questions do we have so far? Okay, now let's go to four minutes. Hold on, just adjust this camera. Is that good? Okay, again, do the same thing. I have my stopwatch ready, okay? And I'm gonna time myself for about four minutes on the same drawing, okay? I'm not using my compress at this stage, okay? Any questions before I start? Okay. I'll text. So, um, quick question. This is Lena. Yeah. Um, we're doing the same drawing, the same exact drawing, uh, four times, but like a different, uh, like minutes. Or Correct. Yeah. So on the lecture when we described. When we looked at the lecture, excuse me, uh, when we looked at the lecture on the slide, I forgot what number it was, but it was um, towards the end of each preliminary drawing will be around two to three minutes, three to four minutes, five to seven, and eight to 10. So if you look at the lecture, Lena, it should be on there. And I can, here, I can pull that up just in case. Let me do that, Let me do that now just to make sure. What I have in the lecture is like just the image available. So uh, when you pull it up, you'll be able to see, let me do a quick screen share. S skip ahead. So right about here is where we divided it, okay? Uh, what I've done is just, I put in the image, okay, four times but it would be as a grid, okay? So if you read these instructions, okay? And, and while we're following along um, with the demo, this is exactly what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Time limits? Yeah, it does. 
Hold on, two people were speaking at uh, one time. Go ahead, Le uh, Lena, you go first and then somebody Thank else. You. Yeah. I think it was just me. I'm just having some internet issues, so it might sound like double. Oh, okay. But uh, I'm not sure, but um, it, it does. I think, Lena, I think we might have lost you again. Can you hear us? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, I can hear you. I, I understood, uh, like, I understood what you said. Okay, perfect. Um, any other questions before I jump to the second drawing? Yeah, um, for these preliminary drawings, do we use the still life reference that you have, or do we yeah. draw this after we Again, create Gary, our own? Yeah, state your name so just I just know who's speaking. Oh, sorry, this is Alada. Alada, yeah, thank you, Alada. Um, so for the actual assignment, you're going to be using your own reference, but for the demo, if you want to follow along, you could use mine. The one that's available but if you want to start with yours which i highly recommend you should do yours first uh, by all means it's up to you just for practicing uh, but when you're working on your four iteration drawings uh, here just make sure that it must be your reference it cannot be mine mine is there just as an option to practice and that's for everybody okay so you can use mine as a practice okay that makes sense? Yeah. Perfect. Any other questions, guys? Guys, don't be shy. Feel free to ask me all these questions. It's just, we need to ask questions during these assignments. Okay. So I'm gonna start off with the next one. So I do have, let me set up my timer. Okay, I have my timer here, I'll put it on the bottom so it doesn't move. And we will start, just remove the lecture, sorry. And go back to my reference because I closed that down. Okay. All right, let's start. And we're gonna mark this as three to four minutes. I'll just say four minutes. Okay. So there's, this is gonna be a different approach what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start actually adding stippling. Stippling is just really dabbing your surface with your charcoal and making either dots or actual, you know, lines that run through. And you can do that within this process. But this is sort of just, again, one approach. Notice I'm making just more of diagonal lines to kind of make a more sort of almost cubist, modernistic point of view. But this is sort of one way of doing it. And I like the fact that, because I want to be able to show you guys variety of different styles, artistic styles, but also different artistic approaches. So if you want to stipple, if you want to cross hatch, if you want to dab a little bit in those surfaces, if you want to blend it in with your fingers, for example, right about there, you can do that as well. Okay. Now here I have a more sort of um, organic kind of curve. So I need to make it a little bit more refined, but notice I went over it again and again. I didn't just do one long line. Okay, you don't have to do that. Even, even if you did, and if you blend it over it, you can see it gets erased. Oops, sorry, actually move my camera. Okay. There's the the sort of Greco-Roman bust. I'm about more, a minute and 46 seconds. Again, I'm not worried about any detail, okay? Because that is not important at this process. I really want to just find it, figure out my composition first. If line goes over, if, we got, if a line, let's say if a line goes like that, it's okay. Don't erase, just keep going. Because it's easier just to blend that away. And then we can go back to it. Let's say, for example, here, I can just blend that in there. Why not, right? I'm not worrying about any of those details. Remember, that's a rule of thumb. I want you just to kind of, again, wrap your head around the assignment. 
around the materials. We're learning the language of charcoal. You have to understand how to use it, how to manipulate it, how to, how to break the rules of charcoal. Okay. Notice these, dark, these marks are a little bit heavier, meaning I'm adding a little bit more pressure. I have my shallots here. And I like this kind of curlicue here on the top of that shallot. And I know the shallot has lines that run vertically on, the, on its surface. So if I blend that area, it almost becomes a gray, but I can go over it. You see that? And notice they all are now starting to be mapped onto the surface. in my head of my Roman bust. And I ran out of time. That's four minutes, okay? That was exactly four minutes and one second. Okay. Now, let's zoom out. Now we have an idea of, again, how I started from two minutes, jumped to four. But notice it's a little bit more refined. This one's really loosely drawn. This one's a little bit more refined. But now if I jump here to the bottom, okay, this is five to seven. So now I can take my time, okay? But then now you could also have more uh, free time to work on the sort of minute details, okay? So did this make sense so far, this process? Guys, don't be shy. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do, because of time, it's about 7.18, because I want to start the actual drawing. I wanna, I'm actually going to jump to my second sheet of paper, and I'm going to let you guys finish your 5 to 7 minute and your 8 to 10 minutes. Remember to photograph this, your completed drawing, which I'm going to do here, and your reference by the end of next week to submit for your assignment. So now I want to, because because of time, I need to jump ahead and actually start the actual drawing. I'm going to take my tape. Yeah, I'm going to make a border. And again, I'm just not calculating the exact measurements. And remember, your tape is your best friend. When you want to remove your tape, remember to put it at a 90 degree angle. We'll talk a little bit about that when we and we remove it later on, okay? Or you could just leave it until the end, to be honest. Or wait, actually, hold on. Let me just make sure that didn't look correct. So I'm gonna fix that. A little bit too short. I need to make it a little bit longer. zoom out so we can see it a little bit better. Is that better? Yeah. Good. Again, guys, if I'm going too fast, please let me know. I can't see or hear anyone. So just remember, always state your name. So I just so I can know who's speaking. And by the end, around 8.15 to 8.20, I'll keep attendance. There's no need to say I'm here because I'll keep track on Zoom. bottom of the drawing. Okay, so now I have 
a sort of a basic, again, rectangle within my drawing. So I'm going to now take my ruler. And this is where I see a lot of students always have the problem in starting off how to make a grid. Okay. The most sort of basic format is to make a diagonal line that runs through the top right all the way up to the bottom left. And they do the same thing from the top left all the way up to the bottom right. Okay. I'm going to do this with my vine. The vine is soft. Remember, take my 24 inch ruler, okay? mark it at those areas, and just make a line. It doesn't have to be dark, it doesn't have to be light, it just has to be a line. It runs through there. And do the same thing here. There you go. Make a vertical line that runs through the center. Just make sure that as straight as possible on your uh, paper so there's no angles. Okay. And then do the same thing make a horizontal line that runs through in the center. And notice your ruler has these pads. So if you apply pressure, they don't move. Okay. So keep that in mind. We're going to be using our ruler next week uh, as well, or I should say the following week for our linear perspective. This will be a vital aspect of the assignment. Okay. Notice like some of these areas are smudging. That's completely okay. Okay. If you ever want to erase it, remember you could use your kneaded eraser or your white eraser to remove that. So get that here. Remember, just be mindful. Don't blend too much of your finger because you don't want to remove too much charcoal. That's another thing I see a lot of students do, okay? So what have I done? I've divided it into four. So I have one, two, three, four. I'm now gonna make another vertical line that runs through here, another one that runs through here, and another, I'm gonna make another set of horizontal lines that runs through on the bottom, okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is because not only to have a reliable grid to use, but I could then go back and actually add a grid on my reference as a guide. And then I can go back and slowly follow each square to make it what? Manageable, to make it less stressful. So when I see a lot of students always worrying about how do I start? How do I begin? How do I make my composition correct? How do I uh, change it? I'm just gonna flip through this side. Same thing here. And you really want to make like a, a large diamond in the center. And again, I'm trying to find that center of my paper, which is what here. It's a large diamond shape. I'm going to make a green line that runs through here. And then another one that goes through here, and then one that goes to here. So if you are intimidated about this assignment, if you're worried about how to start, try to make a grid, that will be a lot easier for you. So if you encounter any problems, just it makes it a lot simpler. Okay, now I have a grid. Think about it, boom, done, finished. I am good to go. Now I can zoom in slightly. And now when I'm looking at my reference, so now let me, I'm gonna wash my hands, give me 30 seconds. So then now, let me get Daisy in here. What I'm gonna do is do a screen share and now let's talk about how to do the grid on my actual drawing. 
So I'm using a Macintosh uh, or a Mac computer, MacBook. And what I would like to do, remember, is to now look at my length times width. And I'm, I'm in preview right now, okay? Those of you who wanna know what I'm using. I didn't have to buy preview, it was already pre-installed on the computer. On the top here, I can be able then just to use this little pen tool, this little marker, and then I can start to select it with by you just clicking on this one here, and I can start drawing straight lines that run through right about here to here. And now I have a diagonal line that runs through the center. But before I even start that, I want to make sure my composition is correct. So I'm going to deselect it. So this is the little icon that comes up, this, well, this one here. So I'm going to move my cursor, and I want to make sure like that length times width is pretty accurate, right? Uh, I notice it's a little bit more wider, OK? What I could do is I could just elongate this area to right about, I'm going to say right about there, OK? I'm going to cut off that area. I'm also going to do the same thing here. And I'm, I'm just doing this willingly, just because I want to meaning I can change any orientation, okay? And I'm gonna crop that, okay? And now it's gonna be a little bit more thinner on the side, obviously, oh, excuse me, on the top and on the bottom. But now, now if I go back and then on the top, I use my pen and start adding my diagonal lines, what am I doing? I'm actually now making it easier to find my center. Now, I've seen a lot of students also print their drawings or print their reference. You could do that as well. You could just use a ruler and a pencil if you don't want to use your computers. Okay. And right there is where the green dot center is. What I also can do is change my color or change my, um, what is, is it exposure? No, it's not. It, it was a contrast. Yeah. If I change my contrast, look what happens. It makes it a lot easier for me to see it. So I can change it to be right about, let's say halfway, like a little bit more than halfway, okay? Now here is it gonna get a lot easier. So for example, if I make a vertical line that runs through the center, okay? And I can just, you know, eyeball it depending on how it arranged and lines up, okay? And make a horizontal line that runs through the center. So that can line up right there and it locks, which is great. I can just save it. And now I have a really great reference from a grid. But then I also can add these ones on here. Or actually, let's make this line, make, let's make this diagonal line first in this first top left square. Because now you can see, look, that needs to be shifted. Right about about there i'm gonna do the same thing here put that right over here and a green dot actually helps me just to kind of frame it all together and if i'm going too fast guys let me know adding another diagonal line here and this is a wonderful resource to use Anytime when you're stuck, or if you don't want to worry about freehanding your drawing, you could use a grid that makes it much more manageable. This one has to be, there you go. Okay. But then now if I put it back, I can see it more. But then I, I can also change it to right about here just to make sure my angles are right. I can see this one slightly off. Actually, hold on, I'm going to move this to right about here. That's right about there. Okay. Now I have a wonderful diamond, but then also I can make an, oop, let me erase that one. Make a line and then on preview, which is really helpful because it actually makes a straight line. Because if you make a uh, line with your mouse, it starts to like make a curve or make a bend. You could actually like, for example, if I made a, curve like that, you can erase it. If I made a small little line, it adjusts it to so it can become straight, which is a helpful, useful tool. And again, if you have Photoshop, if you have any other software, you could do whatever it is that you want to do, okay? 
So I have a grid. Now I can what? I can grid my image. So what I also can do, I'm just actually, I'm gonna save it to right about, let me keep it a little bit lighter, right about there. I'm gonna save, okay? So it doesn't, nothing happens to it, okay? I'm gonna close this. And now when I go back to my actual camera, or my, excuse me, my actual drawing, I can try to then mirror the same proportions on my side. So for example, I can then look at my drawing and say, okay, is it too small? Is it too big? No, that actually, actually looks pretty good. And I wanna just compare and contrast the size of my paper to the size of my reference. So there's no problems, okay? Now, how do we begin? We just tackle it. So I can just follow, you know, square by square, okay? and start working from the center, working from the sides, depending on what you wanna do. You always wanna start off with your vine, okay? Always, 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 please start off with your vine. Do not, I repeat, do not start off with your compressed. The compressed is the one that's angled like a square. That's heavier, you can feel it, okay? Do not, I'm gonna repeat this again, start off with your compressed because it's way too dark, okay? It's gonna be harder to erase, okay? we will then go back to the compress later. So I'm gonna start off just making some lines and I can start to see here is that, what is it, the, I don't know the name, amethyst, excuse me. No, this is the amethyst. This is the uh, white quartz. I think that's white quartz. I'm not, I might be wrong, okay? This is that object here, right there, okay? Now, I can then start to understand and analyze where the rest of the objects will be, okay? This makes it a lot easier for you guys, so trust me. So if you wanna start off with the grid, try to do this first. I notice this, this amethyst part of it, it's like right here, and the other one is like, is that that angle? There's that curve of the drapery that runs through here. I'm just making light marks because if I ever then go back and erase, for example, if I erase inside this object with my white eraser, all of those excess erasing marks will be on there. So I just have to be careful because I don't want to erase the line that I have around it. So it's really push and pull. So you got to play with it. So you got to see how is it working? What do we need to fix? What do we need to correct? That's the, actually the drape right about down here. I can start to erase this area because I don't need the center of this line anymore. And the more and more I'm starting to erase, the more and more better I can start to see my image. I don't want to erase too much, but I just want to erase enough so I, can, I don't have it too confusing. Any questions so far, guys? Remember, don't be shy. Any questions? This is that first arch from that object. And then the other side starts right about here. And then right about here, like at this side where this diagonal lines runs through from this square is the tip of that mar uh, marbled um, spice grinder. I think that's what it's called, right? Spice grinder. Uh, let me get... Uh, Line up back in here. And then right on the bottom, on this square here, like I would say towards this top is where the bowl is. And then it goes kind of arches this way. 
And then here's the top of the bowl. It goes all the way down. And it kind of cuts off here. It gets cut off on that right-hand side. But then here is where that sort of side, this side of this side, um, the object of the uh, actual grinder would be. I notice it's actually a little bit shorter. So I can erase this. I'm sorry, my, my paper keeps moving and I apologize guys. I'll try to lock it down so it doesn't have any more. Okay. I'm not gonna remove that um, excess uh, uh, erasing marks because I don't wanna smear too much of the drawing. So it's right about here. Goes right, runs right about there, kind of juts inwards, and then that's that top of that surface. So then, for example, I start erasing all of these marks. Because I don't need them anymore. It's easier to see. And then here is where the shallots begin. Actually, it curves this way. And then the shallot is pretty large. And I'm noticing on this square, okay, I don't want to remove all the entire square, kind of arches here. There's more of the body of the shallot. And the shallot is slightly bigger because it's closer to that foreground. And goes right over here in this center. And the other one starts right about, I would say in this square, right about here. And then it arches over slightly and then kind of gets cut off right about there. That's that, that's shallow right there. Okay. And again, I'm not worried about detail. I'm just trying to find my composition. So here's the other shallot. Kind of blend that away. And I'm actually going to erase all of these lines because I don't need them anymore. Let me know, guys, if I'm going too fast, okay? If there's any problems, please. This is the opportunity to ask your questions. There is no such thing as a, as a wrong question, okay? This is all a learning process because we're all doing this together. But if you're following along, you know exactly how to begin and how to finish this process. Now, will you um, how, how important is it to have like a really nice uh, photograph of the setup? That's a, that's a very good question. Who asked that question? Oh, this is Hana. Hana, thank you for asking that question. It is extremely crucial because your resolution, your image quality, depends on your photograph and your and how you document it try to take the best quality image uh, i've seen a lot of students actually have difficulty with that because it's either slightly off skew it's not straight it's not even on both sides or all four sides i should say um, if you need to use like a friend's camera or for you you could use your iphone your um, android devices whatever best quality camera that you can find that just you can use just to photograph something use it. If you don't have that available um, for uh, on your own, I would say ask a friend, ask a relative, ask a neighbor, whoever you can. Uh, photograph it to the best of your ability and just go from there. There's also, um, and Hannah, that's the tips and guidelines of how to document your artwork is also available on the modules tab. Okay. Those okay. of you who yeah, those of you who have access to Canvas now, feel free to uh, open Canvas, go to the modules. And on the top section, it's near the course syllabus and the supply list. Uh, under that the section would be tips and guidelines of how to document your artwork. So there's videos and instructions of how to do that as well. Any other questions? 
Um, there's a lot again. Does the um, still life have to be horizontal or vertical? No, does it matter? It does not. Yeah. Uh, that was Ilana? A lot of, yeah. A lot of, uh, that was, no, that's actually a really good question too. Um, I have a vertical composition. You could change it to a horizontal composition. You could change the, you know, from portraiture to landscape. So you could flip it. You could flip your drawing this way. Okay. Depending on your reference, or you could flip it here. It's depending on what you want to do. That's actually a very good question, which I didn't uh, uh, talk about yet. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Okay. I'm just going to continue working. And again, y'all, if you if you have any questions or concerns, please don't be shy. Just feel free to speak at your own pace, okay? You could also provide it in the chat. I'll try just, I'll just try to keep my eye out for the chat more and more. So I just don't forget. So I'm just going over this line here. Just erase this because I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore. And notice I'm going back and forth with my eraser, which is completely normal. It's okay. You're gonna make a lot of iterations in these drawings, guys. So really take your time. Where's my charcoal? <laughs> I can't find my charcoal. You can see like I start to like push that excess charcoal away. I don't want to remove my drawings. That's something I need to keep in mind. Make that more curv uh, curvilinear. But then on this side, I also need to and it's not perfectly straight, but it gets the that composition in the composition in there. Okay, now let's do this side, which is the, the bell, a small little metal bell that I have over there. And then I can start to see, this is where it kind of comes in and then out. Actually, it's slightly lowered. And where the top of the bell would be, and there's the bell. You guys see it? This is the jewelry box. It goes slightly above. It goes at that angle. And I notice it gets slightly cut off because remember we cropped the image. Notice when, look, when I put my finger over it, all of those marks went away. And that's normal. This is the bottom of the, of the bust. Right about here is where it sort of foreshortens. This is the actual head. I'm just really just trying to pay attention and follow along each square. Okay, so now I'm looking at this square. where her ear is, lower this slightly. And then that's where the 
garment that uh, that she's wearing, and I think it's like a little crown. I might be wrong. side compressed to kind of make these shadows you can now start adding value by just blending some of those areas and now i can start adding some of these areas. I can start adding the side of my um, vine. But now like, for example, if I wanna fill in this background, use the side. And blend it in with your fingers. I guess I could erase this. Just to be careful not to erase too much so I don't go over my drawing. you can kind of roughly see the composition. Can you guys see that? Again, so I can't yeah. see or hear anything. So let me know if you cannot see it, okay? I'm just trying to draw and erase at the same time, but then I don't wanna lose too much. I'm gonna take a slight paper towel and kind of remove as much as the excess um, eraser off my paper. So maybe it could clear it up so you can see it better. Let me get some paper towels. I just need one. And actually, I, I have to be really mindful. So I'm gonna just cut it into two and I'm gonna use the edges. So I'm just gonna like move it like a broom and just slowly, very gently, remove all of that excess erasing marks just to clean it up. There you go, you can see it now, but notice, look, it's starting to smear, which I have to be very careful because look how much is taken off and I'm barely even touching the surface, the surface of the paper. I just wanna be very careful and okay? be very uh, gentle these areas. You don't want to be re really rough. So if you did, let's say, for example, if I took my paper towel and, and like smeared it, it took so much off, okay? Just be really, really patient at these stages, okay? So where's my charcoal? Here it is, okay. So then now I have a really kind of rough illustration of my objects. So I have my quartz here. It's just really generalized. My jewelry box, my bust, my bell, the other amethyst stone, those two arches here, that um, spice grinder, as well as the shallots. What have, I, what have I not done? Keep in mind, I have not done any detail. I have not done any shadows or any lights, all I figured out is to sort of map out my composition first. Then I can gradually very, you know, take my time, patiently go back and start adding more darks and more lights. 
So now I can, I'm going to start adding some darks and you'll see what happens because it's pretty interesting what happens in relationship. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm actually losing, I forgot the bottom. There you go. Done. <laughs> I forgot about that piece because I, it looks like I might've skipped it. I'm going to start adding some dark. So I broke a piece of my compressed. Again, the compressed is the one that's angled with four sides. It's a bit heavier. I'm going to use the side and watch what happens. It's really dark. And the same amount of pressure, same exact amount of pressure. I'm going to blend. You can see how dark that is, right? It's extremely dark. Same thing here. There's that bend of the fabric and that kind of curve. Just for the sake of the demo, I'm just adding it in there. Do you see that? Do the same thing here. Between the bell and the amethyst, now it's separating both objects and do the same thing here. Just making some vertical lines that runs through the bust. Do you see that? Now look, it went over the bell. Now, for example, if that happens, if a mistake like that happens, it's a lot easier to erase it with fine. But if worse comes to worse, if you go back with the white eraser, you can slowly remove some of those darks, okay? It's not always perfect because there's almost a ghost image that still appears on there because the amount of pressure I added was the same, but it's still that, it's really, really dark. So I have to be really careful that's why with the compress, you really want to take your time, okay? You don't want to overwork this. You don't want to rush with the compress. If you do, it will look rushed, trust me, okay? And now for the amethyst, I'm just making some lines that runs through like diagonally, small little diagonal lines to kind of show the crevice of the, of the um, object my finger to blend in some of those areas. Okay, do the same thing here with the quartz. Now, if I could use it as a pencil, like meaning hold the edge or the corners, you could do that as well. Remember, you have a really harsh line that runs through. So if you don't want that yet, don't do that in the beginning, okay? Try not to do that in the beginning. adding a lot of darks here on the top so you can kind of see that highly contrasted image now starts to come up pushing the objects closer to the foreground pushing it to the center so it doesn't look like it's sort of floating into that space there's the shadow of the other object Now I'm just gonna make some curves for the bottom. I'm applying a little bit more pressure. You can see how dark that is.
and I'm using my fingers and you can start to see how dark my fingers are getting, which is okay. Because this is going to be a dirty process, but you could always just wash your hands later. And now I'm just going to start to blend in these areas with my index in my middle. Do you know, is there an like Android app to draw the lines on a picture? Guys, again, remember, please state your name when you're speaking, just so I can know who's speaking. This is Hana, sorry. You're good, Hana. Um, to be honest, I do not, but I do have instructions of how to use the grid on the um, tips and guidelines of how to document your work. It should be on there for Android or iOS devices, but for the grid on your phone, um, there must be a way. Maybe this is Zoe. I'm pretty sure you can use Photoshop Express for that. Is that free, Zoe? Yeah, it is. Right, that's good to know. Thank you for that, Thank Zero. You. Yeah. Okay. Although I could be wrong. <laughs> no, I think it's free because I've seen it done before. Students have used that before. Again, guys, you guys have more knowledge than me for technology. You, you're a lot smarter with technology than I am. I'm still trying to use my laptop properly or my other uh, equipment. But if there's other resources that you can use, use them. Why not? Okay. So how does this look? I can't even see on the camera. Oh, there it is, okay. What questions do we have, guys? Um, I don't have a question, but I was just letting you know I just need to pray a little quick for uh, Ramadan. That's okay. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, who's speaking? Uh, it's Lena. Okay, go ahead, Lena. You're good to go. Thank you. Yeah. If you if you guys need to go to prayer or you need to go to salat or break your fast, by all means, guys, you you uh, it's time to eat and it's time to go for prayer. So yeah, because I know it's Ramadan this month. Okay. So on these areas, now, just trying to, actually, I'm adding a lot of darks just so I can kind of get a nice contrast. But I also, I'm gonna go back and I wanna start adding my white. Now the white is interesting because for example, if I, let's say for example, blended all this area, And I know the object is white, right? Like the surface of the object. What I want to do is, depending on how I want to have my light source. Now, a lot of students always debate on this. Like, do I need to even use my white? You can, and you should, because a part of it would be how we use the white. So I'm going to take my compressed white, okay? Now I could use the side or the tip. But now if I start adding some, some lines on like, for example, this side, it's a little bit difficult to see, but it almost comes off a cooler gray, meaning a bluer gray. I can blend that area in. And I could also use the side of my actual compressed. Okay, and you could blend that in area. Could I get a nice, interesting gray? Now it's it's really up to you, depending on how bright or how light you want to make your compressed show up on your drawing. I like sort of stippling those areas, and then again, it feels like chalk because it's almost it's like the white chalk on a black sheet of uh, surface of the. Um, drawing. But for some of those highlights, for example, like on these crevices, I can then go back and actually go over my compressed and start making some more sharper edges. And you get a wonderful built up of texture. Let me zoom in on the camera so you guys can see. You see that? That's a lot easier to read, right? All of those areas we just added, 
but that depends on how abstract it is in the in the drawing and then you step back and it acts as a highlight or a shadow or a dark depending on the, your perspective did did this make sense so far yes yep okay i'm going to keep working on this later on tonight as well and upload the completed drawing